Hello and welcome to Dr. Speak. Respiratory infections are all pervasive and are on the rise. I am Dr. Rashmi Kotin and today we are in conversation with the leading chest specialist Dr. Agam Vora. We are going to gain insights on the causes behind respiratory infections, the signs and symptoms and discuss treatment options. Hello sir. Hi there. Welcome to Dr. Speak and it is a pleasure to have you here with us today, Dr. Vora. Thank you very much. I am so happy to be here. Yeah. So to begin, I would like to understand from you, what are respiratory infections? Ah, your question is very good. What are respiratory infections? Respiratory infections are plenty. You have uh, viral respiratory infections, you have bacterial respiratory infection and the commonest respiratory infection mm -hmm. in our country of course is tuberculosis. Okay. So the germs could be any virus, bacteria, fungus mm -hmm. or tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of respiratory symptoms are due to non-infectious causes as well. If you have cough, it does not mean it is only infection. It could be allergy also. It could be underlying some major illness. It could be some drug reaction. It could be various things. So one did not think of only infection mm -hmm. when there is cough, shortness of breath or chest pain. Mm -hmm. So doctor, who is most likely to suffer from respiratory infection? Trust me, anybody could get respiratory infection. Mm -hmm. And if you really look at it, probably every member in your family has suffered from respiratory mm -hmm. involvement one time or the other. Mm -hmm. Respiratory involvement would be right from nose. You have the cold, nasal okay. stuffiness, congestion, which you see probably two to three times a year with change of weather. Mm -hmm. The commonest cause behind it being influenza, the mm -hmm. viral infection. Then you have throat infection, the pharyngitis, tonsillitis. Mm -hmm. Tell me which child does not suffer from upper respiratory tract or the tonsillitis or the pharyngitis for that matter. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, lower respiratory where we call it bronchitis mm -hmm. and the lung involvement like mm -hmm. pneumonia. Mm -hmm. You may have fluid in the chest. Mm -hmm. So there are various uh, infections which occur at a various level in the respiratory system. Mm -hmm. And respiratory system is vaguely divided into upper and lower respiratory mm -hmm. system. The upper system would begin from nose and mm -hmm. end with airways mm -hmm. where you have tonsils, pharynx, larynx, mm -hmm. etc. being part of it. Mm -hmm. And the lower respiratory involvement would be parenchymal or the lung involvement. Doctor, you just mentioned about tuberculosis. Can you please elaborate on tuberculosis? Tuberculosis is one of the major problems in our country. Why in our country? Globally. Mm -hmm. In fact, one third of the world's population is infected with tuberculosis and probably every two minutes one patient would die of TB. Mm -hmm. By the time we finish our discussion, probably 10 or 20 patients would have died in our country because of tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. That big is a problem. Mm -hmm. Tuberculosis is caused by a single bug called mm -hmm. mycobacterium. This bug has got different family members and it could affect any system. Lung is the most common culprit. The most commonly involved organ in, in tuberculosis disease is lung. But you could have involvement of any organ. Mm -hmm. You can get TB of skin, abdomen, brain, eyes, uh, you know, urinary bladder, bones, bones. etc. Any, yeah. any system could be affected. And your presentation, symptoms could be based on the system involved. Most common being lung, you would have cough, chest pain, mm -hmm. Breathlessness, blood in the sputum, that we call it as hemoptysis, mm -hmm. as presenting symptom. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have weight loss happening because of any unidentifiable cause, mm -hmm. probably tuberculosis is one common disease that one should keep in mind. Doctor would like to know about allergy and allergy related disorders. Interesting again, yeah. allergy, pollution, environmental factors play mm -hmm. important role in manifestation of uh, respiratory symptoms, mm -hmm. but allergy could affect various systems. Mm -hmm. Allergy could affect your eyes, mm -hmm. your nose, your skin, even your stomach. Mm -hmm. You would have heard about food allergies. Mm -hmm. You would have heard about children getting milk allergy, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's allergy manifestation. Mm -hmm. Talking about purely respiratory system involvement, again, with those change of seasons, mm -hmm. suddenly open house and this, there's a mm -hmm. lot of indoor pollution in you cough, mm -hmm. or the police constable who's standing mm -hmm. on the signal, signal and he coughs because of yeah. the vehicular exhaust. Right. Are the common examples of allergy related or the particulate matter related uh, respiratory involvement. The commonest manifestations here is generally cough, mm -hmm. but patients could present with nasal irritation, mm -hmm. running of uh, mm -hmm. nose, it starts with itchy nose, mm -hmm. running of nose, nasal stuffiness, mm -hmm. you could get uh, cough, throat irritations mm -hmm. and this happens with change of season, mm -hmm. with environmental exhaust, with indoor pollution, somebody smoking in the house mm -hmm. and the passive smoke etc. All this plays as allergen, so these are most, one of the most common mm -hmm. causes of non-infective cough. When you don't have infection, the bugs playing role, then probably allergy plays major role in our country. So doctor, how are respiratory infections diagnosed? 
respiratory infections presents as i said with cough most mm -hmm. common presentation being cough mm -hmm. and then you have shortness of breath mm -hmm. the shortness of breath could be at rest patient mm -hmm. could be breathless while mm -hmm. sitting presenting yes. like this or they could have breathlessness mm -hmm. only on exertion mm -hmm. the common presentation is mm -hmm. when i take bath and come out i'm mm -hmm. breathless mm -hmm. when i climb a flight of stairs i'm mm -hmm. breathless mm -hmm. if i wait for a minute or a second probably i'm fine i could do that activity again okay. so these are the presentations mm -hmm. shortness of breath comes up very slowly mm -hmm. and gradually creeps in in chronic disorders mm -hmm. in acute disorders you get sudden onset of mm -hmm. breathlessness okay. and patient remain breathlessness all throughout till you diagnose and treat mm -hmm. the condition then probably chest pain could be presentation mm -hmm. as you mentioned low grade fever mm -hmm. and weight loss could mm -hmm. be presentation mm -hmm. so these are a few of the common respiratory presentations with that when they go to respective doctors mm -hmm. they are made to undergo certain test after yes. clinical evaluation so doctors would clinically evaluate you mm -hmm. look at your nose look at mm -hmm. your throat look at your ears and probably auscult at your chest mm -hmm. and would come to certain conclusion mm -hmm. if they are not too sure of disease mm -hmm. or when we want to differentiate at mm -hmm. certain disorders or rule out certain mm -hmm. disorder we need help of some investigation okay the so common investigation doing mm -hmm. blood test and x-ray chest mm -hmm. and in probably current times mm -hmm. there a lot of swine flu also yes. going on a lot of influenza going yes. on you may have to take nasal swab mm -hmm. or the throat swab yes. for the influenza test mm -hmm. so doctor what are the potential complications of respiratory infections and what should a person do in case of an emergency that's a very good question respiratory disorder would lead to a lot of complication which would be lethal in the sense it could we could lose patients during mm -hmm. emergency state if they don't uh, get medical assistance immediately there are certain disorders which are self limiting say you have upper respiratory viral infection mm -hmm. probably those infection does not require any antibiotic mm -hmm. it requires only supportive line of treatment and probably next few days it settles down but on the contrary if you get infections like swine flu if you get infections like mm -hmm. acute exacerbation mm -hmm. of asthma if you get if you get involvement of lower respiratory tract like pneumonia mm -hmm. those requires immediate uh, attention this kind of patients are seen on opd by doctors and are given treatment patient who's even breathless or patients with oxygen level drop or patients who got underlying unhealthy mm -hmm. state say somebody who's diabetic mm -hmm. somebody who's got kidney failure mm -hmm. somebody who's got liver involvement somebody is alcoholic mm -hmm. somebody is chronic smoker probably those patients are better managed in hospital mm -hmm. they would be treated with oxygen iv antibiotics iv drugs mm -hmm. and probably nebulization the inhaler therapy mm -hmm. and most of the time patients do well would like to ask you can respiratory infections be prevented respiratory infections can be prevented by two means uh, one if we follow cough hygiene mm -hmm. somehow in our country or in our community cough is not really given much importance mm -hmm. to you know you you imagine a situation you are traveling in 915 mm -hmm. early morning train mm -hmm. and you have about 2000 passengers traveling in a small compartment if somebody has got upper respiratory infection the viral infection somebody has got tuberculosis and he keeps on coughing mm -hmm. all 2000 customer I mean, you know passengers in this compartment are at a risk of getting influenza are at a risk of getting tuberculosis now whether they develop disease depends on their immunity somebody who's diabetic again as i said somebody who's got liver kidney problem somebody who's a smoker would catch those infections faster and probably you know he would develop disease so if one thing that we could do is is have good cough hygiene a simple thing like using a you know handkerchief when you cough would go long way so one way of preventing it is community awareness about this cough and you know probably yeah. coughing without uh, you know this kind of uh, protection is not yeah. really yeah. uh, going to be useful yeah. to society so that that message if it is conveyed and then other way of uh, preventing is by vaccination mm -hmm. you have two good vaccines mm -hmm. for uh, respiratory tract infection one is uh, influenza vaccine mm -hmm. which is like as commonly known as swine mm -hmm. flu there are various flus mm -hmm. swine flu is probably one of the most uh, mm -hmm. uh, how do i put it most hyped virus yes. I, i would say or probably most known because of this media because of this whatever because of the uh, death toll that it took but otherwise there are various uh, influenza infections and those uh, vaccines are available to prevent uh, influenza one it to take it every year because influenza strain changes every year and you need to vaccinate them with different strains every year and then you have uh, pneumococcal infection so you have pneumonia vaccines also available and luckily these vaccines gives you lifelong immunity so if you vaccinate your patients uh, you know even once it could give you very good immunity in very few situations you may have to repeat those uh, vaccination maybe at the end of 5 years but i think these are good ways of uh, preventing respiratory tract infection doctor would like to understand from you how respiratory infections are treated 
treatment of respiratory infection would depend on underlying etiology. As probably we discussed, the infection could be bacterial, viral, fungal, tuberculous, etc. So treatment will have two parts. One is supportive treatment and second is specific treatment. The specific treatment would depend on underlying etiology. Maybe for viral you would treat with antiviral, for bacterial you would treat with antibacterial, for tuberculous you would treat with anti-tuberculous drugs. These are all separate drugs. Mm -hmm. And then treatment would be supportive treatment where it depends on the presenting symptom. Say patient has cough, mm -hmm. say patient has got fever, patient has got breathlessness. Mm -hmm. So you would be given treatment to treat or to help mm -hmm. you with that breathlessness, fever and cough as well. So it will have two parts. One must remember that all this treatment course must be completed. If you don't take your antibiotics completely or you don't finish the course of antibiotic, probably it leads to drug resistance. Mm -hmm. And next time if you get infection, probably these drugs may not be useful. Okay. So doctor, would you like to give a final message to your patients? The message that I would want to give to my viewers would be, uh, every house has a case of respiratory infection or the respiratory disease. Be it allergy related respiratory disease, be it smoking related respiratory mm -hmm. disease, be it pollution related or be it tuberculosis. This disease is so rampant. All we need to do is we need to identify these cases. So if you have any of your family member, any of your servants, any of your cook, any of your drivers, staff members, office members suffering from respiratory element, take them to doctors, get them investigated and probably it will help us long way in controlling tuberculosis in our country. It was wonderful talking to you and I'm sure it will benefit all our viewers and thanks again for being part of this show. Thank you very much for asking me to be here. I thank you for those questions and I thank the Health Speak team for the excellent work. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this video on respiratory infections. Subscribe to Speak Health on YouTube and Facebook. Stay tuned.